All big movie genres have life cycles. They're born, they become popular, they exhaust themselves, and then, if they're important enough, they transform. Hugh Jackman's 17-year tenure as Wolverine, I think, bookends two important milestones in the superhero film genre. 2000's X-Men, directed by Bryan Singer, was effectively the start of the superhero craze that's come to dominate Hollywood for nearly two decades. And now, 2017's Logan, directed by James Mangold, represents a response to the public's exhaustion with that dominance. If you want to understand how genres change, the writer to look at is definitely John Coelty, whose famous essay on generic transformation is, I think, a good rubric for what's happening in Logan. Coelty is basically interested in what occurs when genre conventions become so well known that the audience demands something new. What forms does that change take? Well, Coelty identifies four. Burlesque, nostalgia, demythologization, and reaffirmation. Burlesque is essentially a ridiculous exaggeration or a parody of genre conventions. To finish Leo Brody's quote from the start of this video, genres turn to self-parody to say, well, at least if we can make fun of it for being infantile, it will show how far we've come. Mel Brooks is, of course, a master at this kind of thing, and not just for westerns. Moments of burlesque can be found in serious movies, too, when a trope is made to suddenly look ridiculous, undercutting the fantasy with reality. In the superhero genre, Deadpool, a film that helped pave the way for Logan, is a burlesque through and through. Superhero landing. She gonna do a superhero landing. Wait for it. Woo! Superhero landing. Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Totally impractical. They all do it. Nostalgic films, the ones that are good anyway, do more than evoke a romanticized past. They update tried and true storylines with contemporary elements. They make the audience aware of the relationship between past and present. Coelty cites True Grit, but Shane Black's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang fits the bill as well, a hard-boiled detective story in which many of the tropes are de-romanticized, but the story ultimately follows the same beats of discovery and heroism. Hold well on. Demythologized films are the most complex of the bunch. They subject popular myths and conventions to a reality that undercuts and exposes them as inadequate or even harmful. Coelty's archetypal example of this is Roman Polanski's Chinatown, a film that follows the hard-boiled detective genre of classic films like The Maltese Falcon or The Big Sleep until events become so dark and twisted and devoid of moral content that justice is never served and the detective is left severely traumatized. Another movie like this would be the Coen Brothers' No Country for Old Men, in which the lawman of the New West, Tommy Lee Jones, not only fails to capture the villain, but fails to understand him. I don't want to push my chips forward and go out and meet something I don't understand. The final transformation is the reaffirmation of myth, the kind of film that subverts genre like the demythologized film, but in the end chooses to reaffirm the myth not as something that's real, but as something that we need to believe. I wonder if you can think of a superhero film that might fall into that category. So what is Logan? Clearly it represents some shift in this extraordinarily popular genre. If Deadpool signals a self-awareness that the myth of the superhero movie is losing a bit of its power, then I think Logan is an attempt to interrogate the contours of that myth in order to see if there are any interesting directions left for it to go. Director James Mangold is a movie buff, and something that's really interesting about Logan is how he uses one genre to understand another. Mangold states Logan's key theme via a scene from Shane, one of the most popular and acclaimed westerns of all time. Man has to be what he is, Johnny. Can't break the mold. I tried it, it didn't work for me. We want you, Shane. Joey, there's no living with for the killing. There's no going back from them. Westerns are really the perfect genre to measure the superhero movie. The myth of the superhero is in many ways a reincarnation of the myth of the gunslinger. Both are heroes who act outside the law to protect the community at large. Mangold makes these parallels explicit in a sequence midway through the movie when Logan, Charles, and Lara are taken in by a kindly family the same way that Shane is taken in. Both Logan and Shane help the family with work and protect them from greedy business interests. But though Shane is somewhat haunted by his life as a gunslinger, his purpose and the code of laws he lives by 
is still necessary to protect the community in the end. In Mangold's version, the violence that follows the hero can't be contained. Far from the valley being saved, Logan's kindly family is mercilessly and utterly destroyed. And if the point wasn't clear, it's by none other than a clone of Logan himself. This is the closest that Logan comes to demythologization. The whole movie is a meditation on the violence that all superhero films imply. By earning an R rating, Mangold and Jackman get to show a type of visceral brutality that complicates the heroics of Logan's past, as well as those of the X-Men and all superheroes. Like it does Shane, Logan holds up the romanticized past of previous superhero movies in the form of comic books. You do know they're all bullshit, right? Maybe a quarter of it happened, and not like this. Logan is attempting to expose the inadequacy of these fantasies, trying to show that no personal moral code can wield power without risking devastation. This is made painfully clear in the character of Xavier, whose aging mind, it's implied, may have unintentionally killed a number of innocent mutants. For Logan himself, the past exploits of heroism from the other movies reemerges as trauma and nightmares. <laughs> In a touching scene with Lara near the end, he even admits to contemplating suicide. Actually, I, uh... I was thinking of shooting myself, uh... Like Charles said. In the end, Logan makes the final turn into reaffirmation, one last act of sacrificial heroics that reaffirms the myth, even after exposing it as inadequate. You know, it makes me wonder if this is the limit of superhero movies. It's unclear whether a film that sought to fully demythologize this myth could ever really get made, or if the genre itself is even mature enough to handle such a thing. In fact, I think Logan leaves us with these exact questions. The movie itself is a conversation between nostalgia for this genre and our increasing frustration with its limits. More than anything, I'm just excited for what's to come, because it's transition periods like these, as Coelty might say, when the really interesting things begin to happen. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. This episode was brought to you by Audible. Audible has a huge selection of digital audiobooks, which I love to listen to when I'm stuck in Los Angeles traffic for hours and hours and hours. You might as well make that time worthwhile. In honor of the new series, I'm going to recommend Neil Gaiman's American Gods, as read by Gaiman himself and a cast of great actors. It's an extraordinary book, and if you go to audible.com slash nerdwriter, you can get a 30-day free trial and one free audiobook, so you can use that on American Gods or something else. Enjoy. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.